Defense Contractor Program Accreditation, proudly maintaining that status for over a decade. Westwood Electroplating provides over 50 quality finishes to meet your corrosion, cosmetic, or performance needs. On the web at www.westfieldplating.com or 413-568-3716. Westfield Electroplating, putting the finishing touches on technology. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield.
Good morning and welcome to Superintendent Spotlight. It is October 3rd. It really is. We're into <laughs> October now and actually looking outside, the leaves are really starting to, to change if you're driving like around. It, it, well, it's 50 degrees right now and the high is going to be 53 today. difference here really and then, welcome uh, to new england yes, yeah exactly <laughs> wait a minute um, it'll change it will change so. and there's a 70 percent chance of rain today too so but i think that's in the evenings so yes it is so that, that's pretty good so today uh it's uh with, usually with zap and chris but today it's uh the ski team with uh, uh zaparowski and siglowski we have paula siglowski our co-host she hasn't been on with us in a little while so welcome yeah, back paula uh, well thank you so have you been in since the new the other new studio though not since it's been finished yes start we're, with the everything exposed so it's quite absolutely pretty. well look at the background we have isn't it beautiful it's awesome there i mean i know it's called nice. chroma key isn't yeah, it yeah i like thing? it yeah um I'll, I'll after the break we want to be at the beach beat okay yeah. okay I can thank you that. very much oh, that'd all right be awesome yeah, yeah we, we can even change have that. recent shows other shows yeah yeah for obvious reasons i don't so. think i could type that many names in that fast so. no that's <laughs> agreed <laughs> agreed so uh again it is uh you know not going to be a bad weekend tomorrow the high is friday partly sunny saturday or the friday the high is going to be 59 saturday a high of 60 sunny and then 66 and cloudy on sunday but we're in the fall season so um it's all downhill from here <laughs> that's why i see it oh no it yeah then because that other four letter word will start popping up. yes snow rain no. my least favorite rain one. no snow. ice rain <laughs> it's the no. Um, so, you know, it's interesting um, yesterday and I, you know, I don't envy weather forecasters, but yesterday we um, I went to the Dewey House. Right. Mm, yes. And I shared that with with a lot of people because I thought it was such a great experience. But the Abner Gibbs students walked there because it's so close. And there was a question mark of whether or not we were going to go in the afternoon. So if you look at the weather apps in the morning, it was going to rain and downpour from like two th and three o'clock. So when the kids are walking back, so they're like, ah, oh, do we postpone or not? Uh, and then. Um, it didn't rain at all. It was so, beautiful. Uh, yeah, it was actually kind of nice. But very muggy. Muggy. Yes. It was muggy. But that is my world when it comes to trying to forecast the weather for snow and what we're going to do with snow days mm -hmm. or delays because the forecast, Never I mean, know. it does change. You just don't know. So, all right, Paula, who do we have with us here today? We have a lot of smart, intelligent people who can talk to us about special education right. and exceptional students here in Westfield Public Schools. Excellent. That's right. <laughs> a great show. And we're going to start with introducing uh, Dr. Martha Von Mering. She is our uh, administrator of student uh, of special services. You have a long title. Sped director. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. <laughs> that's easy. Um, that is nice. So, and Martha, who did you bring with you today? I brought some of the most famous people that we have in Westfield. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I have right next to me. Introduce yourself. Deb Ecker, SPED supervisor. Okay. Kim Dion, special ed supervisor. And Carrie Kells, I am a special ed supervisor and assistant principal at Westfield Middle School. Right. Um, and so Linda Pierce is not with us today, but Correct. she's our other special education supervisor and slash assistant principal over at the intermediate school. Yep. So this is our administrative special education team, I, I guess would be the best way to... Absolutely. to, to uh, to address it. So we want to talk all about special education today. And Martha, I'm going to let you talk about with a uh, start with some things that are happening tonight, tomorrow yes. night, or last night. Yeah. Uh, you know, wow, you guys just had a lot going on. We have a lot going on this Busy. week. Yeah. Tonight, uh, we actually have a special services meet and greet. It is tonight at Westfield Technical Academy where we are right now. Yeah. Um, so it's tonight at six o'clock where you get to meet all of the folks that we have coming for special education. We have a couple of uh, educational team leaders. I think we have one or two psychologists that are coming, and we have other staff that are coming to meet and greet. Please come, folks. I think that it's a great opportunity to meet our special education team, and um, we don't often get a chance to, to do it on, at this kind of informal level. So. And what time does that begin, and where is it at the Tech <laughs> Academy? That yeah. starts at 6 o'clock tonight in the cafeteria, and refreshments will be served. And immediately following that will be the regular monthly meeting of the CPAC, which is the Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. And nice. Listen, I don't even have to train her. She's doing the acronyms all on <laughs> yes. her own. It's per Pete, look at that. Exactly. I can do that. Oh, my it God. It was on her IEP. It was. There you yes. go. We which broke it down for her. Yes. Individualized, <laughs> Individualized education. education there we go. Absolutely. <laughs> and the CPAC 
They have been around for a very, very long time. It started in basically 1986. Massachusetts state law required that public school districts have a CPAC. Wow. So we have had one for quite a while, and they happen every Thursday. The fr- I should say the first Thursday of every month in the cafeteria at Westfield Tech. Right. From 6.30 to 8.30. And refreshments are served, and also child care is provided, which is very important for mm-hmm. parents to know so they can feel comfortable to bring their children with me with them if they don't have coverage. Right. They can have um, coverage. Get so tonight care. is so on what? What's tonight's uh, theme tonight? They have tonight a CPAC meeting? Tonight is right. basic right. rights. So okay. the Federation for Children with Special Needs will be coming to do um, their <laughs> basic rights um, description and conversation. Excellent. And, that's, so and that is tonight. Parents so. who have special education students go yeah. or are there yeah. questions, who goes, guardians? Who go? Yeah, who can go to CPAC meetings? Basically, anyone who has an interest in special education mm-hmm. can come to the meeting. Okay. Typically, they are parents or guardians. Grandparents can be brothers, sisters of a child with exceptionality can come to the meeting and learn about different things. Tonight is the basic rights. Um, in November, we have the Bureau of Special Education Appeals, otherwise known as BSEA. They're coming out and talking about mediation, what happens if a parent or a guardian has a concern with a particular process and rejects something or doesn't quite accept something, they can go to mediation. And okay, good. We have a mediator comes out and talks about that. And then in December, we have culture of inclusion. January, there is no meeting uh, because, uh, well, we worry about the weather in January. Yeah. <laughs> and then in February, we have let's learn about summer programming. Uh, we will have our folks back for that uh, to talk about extended school year services. March, advocacy. In April, going to school to school and what that means as far as... So that's more about like the transition, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, we have our wonderful uh, 2020 Shining Star Awards, which will be that's happening right. May 7th. And oh, I like that. The mm-hmm. Shining Star is awesome. I like that a lot. <laughs> yes. yep. The and cookies are really good. <laughs> yes, the cookies are awesome. The, well, what's yes. nice about the Shining Star Awards is the nomin- who nominates the, the teachers? It's the, the students and parents, students right? Students. Yeah. 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 So that's yes. great. And the other really cool thing, not the other, not the only other thing that we're talking about today is what we started last year, last January, was what we call a parent guardian support group. Right. It so. is a free and confidential support group that will help parents and guardians along the emotional journey of raising a child with special needs or a grandchild, because we have a mm-hmm. lot of grandparents mm-hmm. out there who are taking We do. We have a lot of grandparents Ooh. raising grandchildren in Westfield. So those meetings are the second Wednesday of each month from 6 to 7.30, and those take place at the Westfield Middle School Library. And there are two facilitators, Jen Bogan, who's a BCBA. What does that stand for? Uh, Sorry. <laughs> now I put her on the spot. Certified <laughs> behavior <laughs> analyst. Yeah, there you go. And then Alice Barber, who is a licensed mental health uh, clinician. And they start, uh, the first one actually started on September 11th, but the one that's coming up is October 9th. Again, Westfield Middle School, 6 to 730. October 9th is the next one. And it's a time that people can talk about their, jor- their journey um, of raising a child with special needs, with exceptionality. And it's quite an emotional journey from birth until they graduate high school. Sure is. But that's free and confidential, so they wouldn't expect to see any SPED supervisor. No. 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 At those meetings. Purely, purely for parents. Purely for parents, for parents and guardians. Absolutely. Okay. So Absolutely. you know what I want to get back and then CPAC, because we have, a, we have a pretty great CPAC, I think, mm-hmm. here in Westfield. Very good um, CPAC. And I Very think, strong. and I've, you know, other districts I don't think have that. Um, have that luxury so, you know we have some really fantastic people on it so um, would you you know and I know that the CPAC is working works with all of you in terms of uh, you know in, in some cases working on communication just better access to special education and improving children's academic success um, and so I think parents you know they're always looking right our CPAC is always looking for additional parents to join so yeah. they would reach out they would have to co- barely the best way is come to a meeting mm-hmm. absolutely, and let people know you want to come so, Absolutely. And they can also, if they really want to, um, which I would encourage them to do so, they can email, and it is all lowercase, and it's Westfield CPAC, S E P A C, at gmail.com. Perfect. And they can get some information from that. And uh, Rachel Bullock, who is one of our lead CPAC um, parents, right? Parents yeah. will help yep. get them started. Yeah. Now, what was last night? So last night was actually a. a it's great to follow up with this. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Rachel 
um, and Westfield Infant Toddler Early Intervention Program. Um, one of the schools that I am a supervisor for is our Fort Meadow Early Childhood Program. And um, Fort Meadow works closely with Westfield Infant Toddlers for children who are in early intervention transitioning into Fort Meadow um, on an IEP. So Rachel, um, myself, and um, Westfield Infant Toddler grouped together and we uh that's the wits the right i had to ask wits. that yeah that was an acronym <laughs> i had to ask it's toddler yeah. services yeah. um and we get, came together and we had a presentation last night for incoming parents uh it was a joint effort um, my part of it was just to let them know that we understand that this is a really big transition sure um, i wanted to explain the difference between early intervention services and preschool the differences in the similarities and how all that um, how that works, how the special education process works, um, what we have to offer here in Westfield, um, and who to go for to help that transition um, become smoother and more comforting for families. So did that come out of CPAC, that, that, that meeting in the end? Yes, CPAC was there as well. They were great. I mean, it was... Um, and Rachel spoke, and some of the CPAC members were there, and they talked parent to parent with, with everyone. They invited them to these meetings because you don't necessarily have to have a child in Westfield Public Schools yet to join this meeting. Actually, the, the um, basic rights meeting tonight would be a really great mm -hmm. um, informational meeting for parents to come to because we touched upon that a little bit last night. Sure. Um, we had some refreshments. We had a good turnout. It was a really great time and my hope was that families were really feeling welcome to come here for Westfield and you know trust their little ones with us yeah and we're going to do another one I believe in the spring you had mentioned we're going to do it we're going to try doing this twice a year ongoing um, so that it just kind of becomes part of the transition process perfect and and again I'm sticking with CPAC for a little bit and then we'll take a break but you know, there's been some other, so you, you talked about what they're talking about this year, but there's been some other pretty interesting presentations from CPAC in the past too, right? Do you want to talk about a little bit of those? And, and a lot of them are from our own folks. So I, I want to give our, our staff a shout out for uh, really coming back at night to talk about these topics. Absolutely. I think it's critical that we pair very well with the CPAC in the district. Um, and in the past, they have had uh, numerous talk of topic presentations such as what is a 504 plan with Susan Dargy, tiered instruction with Chris Rogers. What does that mean, tiered instruction, for our listeners who may not have an idea what that's about? Anyone can jump in at that point, but anyone? Anyone? So t anyone? <laughs> tiered <laughs> instruction anyone? is just as it sounds. It's tier. So we have tier one, tier two, and tier three. What's tier, tier one? Tier one would be your um, interventions that are done in the classroom that we assess through um, Title I. Okay. We have all kinds of reading interventions, math interventions. Tier two is when we have those smaller group settings where they might be pulled into a corner of the room and got and receive explicit instruction in reading or math. Tier three is when we take them out, and tier three is usually your special ed interventions. Okay. So just if your child has a need, you don't have to jump to tier three. Right. You can, you know, you... UDL, Universal Design for Learning. We need to look at the children in the classroom. What do they need? Um, then we look at the Title I interventions that we can provide. And then you can move on to Tier sure. 3 if that's necessary. Absolutely. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. No, that's okay. And then uh, Denise Rosala was wonderful and came in and talked about MCAS and, and the different um, pieces of MCAS and how those are scored. Social skills development with Karen Kennedy, who is one of our autism assistants and specialists for the district. Sherry Elander is transition planner and works with us uh, as far as transitioning students into adulthood, uh, those kids age 18 to 22. Right, and that, that's our East Mountain Road program here in Westfield. Correct, Correct. absolutely. If you're driven by, you see the sign Westfield Public School. It should have an S on it, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed that, right? Shouldn't it say that? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a little things I pay attention to. <laughs> And then we had, um, I don't know if people have heard of Professor Dr. Deeker. Lisa Deeker. We've yes, had, we've Lisa done a lot Deaker. of work with her in our district. She is from the University of Central Florida in Orlando, and she came and has, has been doing lots of work with us on inclusion best practices. And then we had a great presentation by Nancy Dugan for dyslexia and other learning disabilities. So we are very, you know, we're very fortunate to have involved parents wanting these meetings, right. as well as school educators wanting to provide the information. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. 
Excellent. All right. Um, first of all, and I just want to recognize our students on the cameras yeah, today. Nice they're job. doing a fantastic <laughs> job because if you're looking at the TV screen, right, um, you know, they're zooming in. On, have you noticed? They're yeah, zooming yeah, in on you when you're job. talking. Great job. Yeah, yeah, Paula doesn't want to look. But. Stop looking and then you'll just enjoy the flow. There you go. More natural. Can you help yourself from looking, though? Yes, I can. You, okay. <laughs> can we compliment the director? See, I'll, I'll move oh, back. Oh, there you okay, go. Okay, well, right, we'll compliment our director. Nice too. job. Thanks, nice Pete. Nice job. Woo. All right, we're going to take our first break. You're listening to Superintendent Spotlight on WSKB, or you're watching on WCPC Channel 15. We'll be back in a few, folks. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Noble Hospital, a brand new name for a Westfield institution which is improving the health of our community every day with quality and compassion. Noble Hospital and Bay State Health, better together. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 at 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. No warning. And welcome back. <laughs> we, we got a little warning. Uh, welcome back to uh, Superintendent Spotlight, which is the ski show today with Zap and Paula. Is it uh, ski weather yet? It no. Is, uh, no, oh, and hopefully that never not. comes, so come on now. <laughs> no. Um, it, no. I, my, my watch says it's up a degree. Oh, is it up to Ooh. 51 now? 
Well, Superintendent, you still want to think about summer, right? We'll yeah. Can we can we do uh, summer? Yes. Oh, there we go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful hot. Yeah. I'm not looking. I refuse to look. No, but really, there's. I Paula, can't, you're can't sitting see so right much. on a there's sand dune. You're sitting right on the beach sand yes. right now, Paula. Yes, yes, <laughs> <that's laughs> it's getting rather <laughs> uncomfortable. In the sand there. <laughs> Don't forget your sunscreen, yeah, right. folks, okay? Because you know. <laughs> We're all a little fair-skinned around here, yeah. I think. So, um, okay. again, welcome Those back cities. to Superintendent Spotlight. <laughs> We're having a little fun here today. Uh, and we have fun here every, every time. But, uh, listen, uh, there is uh, we have a show next week, but it's actually going to be a best-of show. We're going to rerun our STEM show because oh, it was coming up. awesome and we're doing mm. stem week october 21st to 25 uh 25th and actually um there, there's some great stuff going on so we're going to talk a little bit more about that october 17th we're going to have denise rosala on she's our director of assessment and accountability and sue moore and we're going to talk about our english learner program and as we were talking about um cpac there is a new lpac which is essentially modeled after the cpac so thank you for blazing the trail, folks. Oh. Um, and, of course, their first meeting is October 16th, 2019. And those are also held at Westfield Middle School in the cafeteria from 6 to 7. And so the first meeting topic on the 16th is parents and schools as partners. So I want to thank Denise for putting that together. Refreshments and child care are provided at the meeting. It's almost as if they took your flyer and just, um, <laughs> just modified it. Why reinvent is, the why, wheel? Why, yeah, of course, right? So we left off. We were talking all about CPAC and really a lot of the great things and tra- a lot of the great things they have going on in trainings and you know again if um if you are interested in joining please attend the next meeting which is tonight uh on basic rights so now we're going to uh, switch gears a little bit and we're going to talk to one of on uh, one of our special education supervisors kim dion uh, and you you work at the high school and you do other schools as well but there's a lot of great there are a lot of great things going on at westfield high school right correct there's a lot of great collaboration between our gen ed students and our students with disabilities so we have a lot of programs in in the school that our students collaborate together with. Uh, one, for example, is our peer mentor program. It's a uh, course that the students take. They get half a credit for the semester, and they're matched with um, one of our students with disabilities. So let me just clarify. So a general education student would be matched with a student who has disabilities. Correct. And they mentor them? They mentor them what in, does that look like? in a classroom. So, okay. for example, they may be in a physical education course, and they'll work with the student um, so that the student can access the curriculum, like awesome. like our gen ed students. Um, they have to mm. apply, uh, they have to sign a contract, and then they get matched uh, with a student. Uh, we have students- Is there some training that happens for the students So um, the teacher will uh, explain to them, you know, mm. what uh, their responsibilities are, and then work with them in the classroom. Uh, mostly in our DLP classroom is where we see a lot of our peer mentors. And DLP stands for? Our Developmental <laughs> Learning Program. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That so, one got by me, too, but that's why we brought Paula to yeah, keep us in check right. today. Yeah, she keeps us in line. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's really great because our students get to see um, how you know, the disability affects the student and sure. um, they work with them really good. One of the things that they do work with is our community closet, which is uh, people will donate clothes for our students um, at the high school and they actually have a laundry service. So oh, it's cool. called oh, Suds nice. and Buds. Nice sign up. Suds and Buds. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's called Suds and Buds and actually I just oh, brought no. two, uh, oh, two really big bags amazing. of clothes. My son finally cleaned out his room <laughs> and I was able to bring some clothes. And so what they do is they wash them, they sort them, that's uh, great. they deliver them to the community closet. So that's one, one uh, task that the students um, do. They also work with the students at uh, Cafe Fridays which yeah. is for on our Fridays. It's on Fridays, <laughs> and it's for our teachers and central office staff, and then for also our. Has office. that started? No, next Friday. All right, because oh, I'm feeling a little pitch, left out. The pitch is coming. Out. Hold no, on. No, okay. so, yep. So right. the pitch is coming. Um, <laughs> it was supposed to be this week, but we had a little glitch. So it's next week is going to start. Um, they're actually going to be selling pumpkin spice cookies and mini apple pies oh, along with it, coffee. Of, what, I know. What time do you need to be there? What time yeah. do you need to be there? So yeah. they'll be sending out order forms, and then the students will... Define mini apple pie. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like a table talk pie? It, is it like table talk? Could, could I eat a pie by myself? I'm sure you yes. can eat more okay. than one. All right. 
We know you could. Good to know. <laughs> wait, wait. So you, skip, you skipped about the coffee. Oh, so yeah. in the coffee, oh, yes. The coffee. So they will take orders and then they will deliver them to the teachers. Oh, that's cool. And to central office staff that orders them. Nice. Also our Pathways program, our off-campus uh, school. Great. So they'll deliver that. And it's a great opportunity for the students to learn. They actually go to Big Y. Um, to collect whatever supplies they need. Wow. Uh, for Which the is a skill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Sure. Um, I'm going to put a little plug in for them, though. If anybody wants to make some donations for the program, that'd be awesome. How Startup do they do that? costs. Uh, they can actually drop it off at the high school in the office. In the main um, office. In the main office. You know, they're always looking for cop, uh, coffee cups, they're looking for sugar, anything that can help the students. Gee, um, Central Office yeah. has a lot of cream. Yeah. We have yeah. a coffee. coffee. Or maybe coffee. a big Y card would be helpful. Yeah. 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 We can help. Right. We like to help. Yep. And then there's <laughs> and we want to order some pies. <laughs> okay. okay. Absolutely. And I was kind mini, of expecting. Mini pies. It'll make me feel a little bit better. <laughs> so I don't need a whole apple pie by myself. I was kind of expecting a, a green room t this morning with some mini apple no, pies. No, <laughs> no. We, our, our budget's low. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Okay. But there is the restaurant right next door, so we, um, <laughs> you can stop over. So we have a couple. Are they up is Tiger's Pride. Tiger's Pride has been up, but if they're not open this week, it's a freshman week. So, uh, but they they had meals last week, and they'll have meals again next week, and then they'll start doing. I think within a couple weeks, they'll be open every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pretty much. So, um, getting ready for that big Thanksgiving buffet. But coffee, coffee I know. Fridays is that every Friday once it kicks off or the cafe Fridays? Friday. Yeah, every, every Friday, Friday. from every now Friday. to the end of the year. Till the end of the year, That's unless great. you know we have a it's snow, snow day. day. <laughs> Ski. Yeah. Stop swearing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it's that really. Stop swearing really. That word. You say that word and my blood pressure goes up. Snow uh, day? Snow Yeah. Snow day, snow Listen, day, snow day. I'll call each of you at four AM. I will call each of you okay, I'm up. at four AM. Superintendent. And you can and ask you what's it look like yeah, outside your house. your house. I do have Looks a few like folks that I do that to, and I will yeah. shout out you know, I will miss uh, Mayor Sullivan because he's my four o'clock snow snow day first phone call. Oh, I think he'd love for you to continue that. I I did tell him I would keep calling him. It's part um, of the mayoral. Uh, oh I get the 5.30 call on my way into the studio. Oh, so well, that's late. How, how's the weather, Pete? No. And yeah, then, right. Exactly. How's um, the roads? Is what, well, we talked to the police department. We talked to, obviously, transportation. Yep. Sometimes you tar call me. Sometimes I call you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up. Um, I was going to say, what else would you be doing, Paula? <laughs> well, and, and it's just, it makes for an incredibly long day, oh. folks. I, I mean, because it's not like we even get the day off. Well, and it know, starts people the night before. It, I mean, truly, if you ask a teacher, it starts 1 o'clock the previous afternoon. Well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, what did you hear? What did you hear? But you know what's interesting, too, is we have two extremes like you know there's i can't win really win no. either way and and i've accepted that but you've got the folks who said you know i can't believe they canceled school because back in 1922 yeah. when we i was in school we walked ways. we walked yeah we walked right. uphill both ways with and, their brother and, on their shoulder yeah with no shoes <laughs> with no shoes <laughs> right. and uh then you have the folks that are saying you know oh there's two snowflakes you need to cancel right. school and obviously our main concern is safety and that's why we check with all of the um you know, the, the professionals here in Westfield, the police department, mm -hmm. for sure. And, you know, when we had the school out in Russell, we would even contact right. the state police out in the, because they're right across the street pretty yeah. much. So um, it was just, it, it's a difficult decision. And everyone tells me, you know, they don't envy well, that part of my mm -hmm. job. And, and people look at what is happening in front of their house. They don't right. realize that Westfield has 200 miles of road. So it's interesting because if you go, if you keep going straight on the high school right. area, right? You're right. on Montgomery Road, turns into Main Road. It starts going up in elevation. Right. So it could be snowing there right. but it's rain in downtown or Westfield. the holyoke mm -hmm. absolutely line or same yeah, thing absolutely um yeah we have and side um, roads and side roads and the thing people don't consider too is as sidewalks yes right. the walkers because we have a lot of walkers yeah. probably half of our students are walkers actually in westfield yeah and if people aren't out clearing their 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 sidewalks right. and the kids are walking out in the street right and we don't like that. No. No. That's how people get hit by cars. But so, Superintendent thank you for Governor. raising my blood pressure. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm good. We're here with other special people talking with another S subject being special education. Yes, I know. And I know. I, I digress. I do not know how my question I digress. about coffee got us on to snow, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to refocus us on to That's Cafe why we brought Friday. you. Because <laughs> you never know where the show is going to go. So, <laughs> Thank Cafe you, Holly. Friday. So, Cafe Fridays. Yes. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about was our Best Buddies program. Mm. So, that is uh, students with and without intellectual disabilities that get paired up again and they go to different events uh, throughout either the district or Western Mass um, for example I believe they're going to a farm October 15th I think um, 
they're going to be going to October 16th. So they're, they're going to go to a farm. They're going to do a hayride together, um, apple picking. And then they're going to the Western Mass chapter, I believe, is having uh, Thunderbirds. Best oh. Buddies Night. Oh, nice. nice. Um, so they're going to go to that. That's October 26th. Um, they're best, I think there's a Best Buddies prom every yep. year, too, yes. right? Yeah, yes. I remember yes. that. Yep. Best Buddies prom. They actually sent two student leaders to University Indiana okay. uh, this summer in July for a Best Buddies leadership conference. Nice. So that was really cool. How many students are involved, both about, in the peer mentoring and in the Best Buddies? So probably about 35 in the Best Buddies program. Wow, that's, that's um, excellent. I'd say about maybe 10 peer mentors. Uh, that's fantastic. You know, really looking to expand the peer mentor program next year but did that just start the peer mentoring program no it's, it's been, been around a for a while what i'm curious about and i don't know if you know the answer but i'm going to ask you anyway <laughs> okay <laughs> all right Give do you think we shot. we've create any teachers want teacher like future teachers out of doing that was my question that's yeah. that's my hope and that's something that i've been thinking about to actually kind of like we've done um that you're currently doing now at the high school with the criminal justice right and over some education yeah. to maybe develop a course that we can work with a college uh, so that the yeah. students can be involved in the school with our students with disabilities and actually take a course that right. they can receive college credits for um, something a dream of mine a vision of mine for the next four or five years maybe my vision too yeah. so let's, there you uh, go. let's talk okay. um, but you know what I think and people need to know this I don't think people realize that there are less people going into education Paula, would you agree oh, yeah. from the HR <laughs> office? Critical it's shortage. It's a critical it's a shortage. shortage. Yeah. Um, in all areas, um, it surprised me. I've been in this business over 20 years, although I look like I'm 21. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been in it over 20 years and, you know, posting positions, even elementary, and getting very few applicants. Yeah. That was... Um, that was a new one for me. This because year. Yeah, it used to be a position, you'd have yeah, tons you'd of post, applicants. You would post it and you basically right. would have to shut down any electronic um, job applications within 24 hours. Because, because you had you so many. Have, well, yes. Yeah, so it is a challenge. Um, Westfield yeah. Public Schools continues to look uh, not only for special education teachers, but paraprofessionals. Mm, yes. So for Absolutely. all of our listeners out there, you can yeah. always look on the website, Westfield Public Schools. There is a link for human resources and the vacancies. So you might not know or might not be looking, but we're always looking for people. And the best way to get um, people into the district is through people who really care about the district. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, with my work with the Workforce Skills Cabinet across the state, and we're in the Pioneer Valley region, which includes Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin, the top, you know, field where we need, where help is needed if you are or a workforce is needed is is healthcare but then uh, then you go to manufacturing engineering education is number mm. 3 mm -hmm. i don't think people realize that no. um, so it's certainly something that i know that the state is recognizing and wants to at least address as well so that's interesting all right Pete, i think we're up for another break it is almost 9 25 here uh you're listening to superintendent spotlight or watching mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back in a few minutes thank Can you, you read <laughs>
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV, Internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. Underwriting for Community Radio on WSKB is brought to you in part by Rockies. Over 30 convenient locations throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Florida. One of the nation's largest ace dealers. Expertise and great product selection in paint, hardware, lawn and garden. That's Rockies, rock solid service since 1926. On the web at rockies.com. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 at 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. We're on the air. There we are. Like right now. Welcome back to Superintendent <laughs> Spotlight. Um, We're on the air now. Pete, after the next break, we are going to do sports. That's what okay. I was trying to tell you on the break. And I'd also like to, uh, we're going to travel to my backyard after this, okay? Oh. All right, I got that. Right, do you remember that one? All right. Yep, I remember yeah. that one. Okay. I'll load it up. Um, yeah, I'm going to take it to my house after this. It's about time. We've yeah. been waiting for that I invitation. Know. All right. Actually, uh, if you'd actually take me a picture and send it to me, I could actually. You could do actually do it. I think I will do that. Cool. But yes. it, what the picture we have is pretty darn close because I have a pond in my back. I know. So. And the leaves are changing. It looks pretty good. All right. Uh, so we we are talking special education today here on Superintendent Spotlight, and we had uh, Kim Dion was talking about Westfield High School, and you had a few more things to share with us, right? Sure, so. just a couple more things. Okay. I just wanted to give a shout out to um, the school because they became unified champions uh that's they were recognized as a unified champion school by special olympics uh, which is a really great um opportunity for our school There's i about posted that on our, our i know mr dendrizik posted it on the westfield high school page mm-hmm. i stole the post and posted it on the <laughs> district okay. page and that's westfield mass public schools if you like us on facebook not new jersey not new jersey and that's why we had to put the ma yes, there because they I stole know. it before well okay they came up with it first <laughs> um but Really, there's lots of information on that page, so make sure you check it out. Okay, what else? Do you so, have? Um, and then the other, the other thing that I just really want to talk about was our East Mountain Road program. Okay, um, that's our, a great topic. Yeah, I mean, our I students, was there Friday. Right, our students are really um, involved in the community. What, what is that? Pro- because you know, a lot of people have no idea. So it's a program for our students, uh, 18 to 22 years old. Okay, and, and we'd heard about that earlier, but like, who gets, who's in there? What do they do? So it's our students, um, they have not uh, received the high school diploma. Diploma, okay. Um, so the students actually will go to a different um, places. So look, we have some students that go to Westfield State. Okay. Uh, we have students that go to HCC. That They're will taking take cor- college courses Is that the ICE there? program? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. They're taking college the ICE courses. Mm-hmm. Um, college courses. Uh, we have kids that are in a photography class. Um, they're in uh, computer class, math classes. Then we have some students that actually go out. Uh, they'll go to, I believe, um, Pilgrim Candle. Yeah. Um, they'll work there. Right. Um, they get jobs, right? They get jobs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They get jobs. Uh, we have um, a new uh, Ohana School of Performing Arts. Our students go there. Um, What's that? So it's. Uh, it's a school it's for a, performing arts. Like Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I never heard of that though. <laughs> it's recently opened. I'm learning. Um, I recently like this. Recently opened, so I'm not really sure if they take like dance classes. Okay. I'm not sure of the specifics of that, um, but they they really the teachers and the um, paraprofessionals really work with these students. You know, they're teaching they them how to make a call to schedule a van. Right. to get them right. to where they need to be. Um, so they're learning a lot of True great skills. skills. They're, they're learning life skills, yeah. too, yeah. about how to be successful after mm-hmm. they leave us. Right. And I think do some of them also, you said they may not have a traditional diploma, um, and often at times that's to do with MCAS, but right. I know they keep re- trying to take that as well. Right, right? so we have, um, right now we have three students that are studying to take the MCAS, MCAT, okay. um, retake how many students are in the East Mountain Road program? I think it was like 20. About 20, 25 maybe right yeah, now. Yeah, it's in that range. Right. And Sherry does a great job with the she program. Does. So she does. we want to recognize that too. Anything else? No, I'm good. All right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we're going to move on, go back to um, uh, 
Deb for a second because you've been doing some PD present PD is professional development folks. So <laughs> uh, some presentations. Do you want to talk a little bit? I think you did one last week at here. I did one here at Tech. Um, yeah, pull the mic up. This is my second year um, working with uh, Tech Academy. Um, you know, really impressed on the supports that they give our kids who are on IEPs. Um, it is a different different situation here at Tech because it's at it being a vocational school, one mm. week is academics, one week is shop. Which so in itself is a challenge it is. For, for, for kids, every, for everybody. everybody. Right, because you have nine days in between the last time you were either in academics or shop. Couldn't you count the weekend? Exactly. Oh, I was wondering how you came up yeah. with nine. <laughs> I can do math sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, we do have our, you know, many students on IEPs are both our shop teachers, our general ed teachers, and also our special education teachers really work together to try to provide the accommodations and the modifications that they need um, to kind of help that out. Um, during their faculty meeting this, year, um, this week, I presented um, some information regarding service delivery, um, differentiation, uh, or how instruction can be delivered both in the general setting and the special ed setting and overall how mm. we can really support our students and um, i just wanted to give a shout out to the academy because um i think they do a really great job supporting our kiddos here agreed and you know the academic piece is one thing but the shop piece is a whole new world for mm -hmm. a lot of our mm -hmm. students right, yeah um and we have a wonderful staff here at, in each of the programs that really care a lot about kids. Uh, wonderful staff throughout the district. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> yes. What I'm, I'm doing is reaching out to, um, I, I work with several schools and um, I have a PD plan for Abner and I'm trying to do that throughout the district um, just to just to refresh teachers, give them information they may or may not know, and just kind of be there as a source of support so that we can just, you know, support our students the best way that we can. Excellent. So. And then one of the district initiatives this year, right, was Westfield Middle School's one-to-one uh, -one Chromebook initiative. Yeah. And, of course, we're trying, hopeful to replicate that at Westfield Intermediate School starting in January. Uh, and thank you for blazing the trail, Carrie, because... <laughs> we uh, try. Well, we're going to learn from your <laughs> yeah, our mistakes, missteps. Yeah. Missteps, I'll call them. <laughs> and it's not even yours. I just I know that the first day we rolled this out, we had internet connection issues that one day, but it was resolved by the following yeah. day. It was so, 810 kids long. Logging on at the, at the same, same time. time. <laughs> and that's, listen, that's hard for yeah, anything. But our staff was phenomenal. The tech staff Talk was about there. it. Excellent. Okay. So how, the, how did it work and, sure, and how is it benefiting sure. our kids? So we started the one-to-one -one initiative the week after school started. Right. Um, Sarah Scott, our librarian extraordinaire, spent most of the summer just getting ready to organize this. The Chromebooks came in maybe a week before school started. Yeah. And she we ordered had, a lot. Uh, we had eight hundred over over eight hundred. Three thousand five hundred and thirteen in the district. Yeah. And right the now, teachers also received Chromebooks. Right. So of course the students Chromebooks came in before the teachers, which right. always causes a little angst. Um, so Sarah and her staff went through and they coded every um, Chromebook, every homeroom has a cart, a charging cart, so the children all go to their homeroom, they get their Chromebook. That is their Chromebook that they take with them throughout the day. Before they go to lunch, they put their Chromebook in the next class that they will be going to uh, after lunch. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's already there. Okay. Then they go to lunch. I mean, they've done phenomenal. Um, we've talked to them before it even started the first day. They all got their Chromebooks when they were able to log on. In order for them to log on, they opened it up. They put in their code, so which is their lunch number. Right. So they put that in for lunch. They put it in their Chromebook. That is now there. So Stefan Zaporowski's Chromebook, that is your Chromebook. No one else can get into it. And they it. have it for two, both years, 7th they, and 8th grade. Yes. That's the plan? That's the plan. So what happens is Stefan gets his Chromebook. He opens it up, and he had to sign that he was going to take care of this, that he wasn't going to go on inappropriate websites, yeah. that he wasn't going to do this and that. Well, if they do, just know. Well, we, I'll, we, the I'll world talk about that. The world gets notified, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everyone signed on and some children were like oh no I'm not going to check this okay so we spoke with them individually and they're like oh we thought we were being funny so we worked through that Good. and we got all 810 students set up um, so the next day the trials started right so what happens parents you've probably received some of our phone calls yeah. anything that they type or a teacher types that is deemed inappropriate. Now yeah. that could be you're looking up something on Emily Dickinson that got flagged. I got that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Any anything 
that gets flagged. Now we're not going to say why that's inappropriate, but right. just figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is it's not really. I mean, Emily Dickinson. There's a no, word in there right, that right. would, that would flag. we get it. Yes. We get it. Word yes. Search. So in, I don't want people to think Emily Dickinson no, is like no, a bad no, 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 thing. No. And but illustration. What she do? Why is she inappropriate? Like, uh, well, even well, come off of it if you really think well, what happened <laughs> to her. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, 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 yeah. Hello. So anyway, as <laughs> even as the child is typing, even if they're putting the word illustration parts of illustration might come up so you will see the whole context but we've been really just Pete and I my assistant principals we've been trying very hard to get the children right away so it's kind of funny right at 1109 if they type something we try like 1110 you if get possible yeah. we get them and they're like oh my gosh I didn't type that I didn't hit but, but, but. so it's been a, a learning curve the engagement has been unbelievable what the teachers have been doing has been great it's all interactive but we're also still looking at student to teacher discourse and student to student discourse so right. they're not just sitting there looking at a computer all day right where an impact special ed that i think is phenomenal is in the years past we've had access to chromebooks right the special ed students didn't want to use them because no one else was. Well, and that and wasn't it wasn't a district. Well, listen, before I started superintendent, we didn't even use Google at all. Right, right. So I think there are lots of pluses with Google sure. Classroom, Google for Education, sure. and we're trying to take advantage of all. But the of kids that, didn't right? want to look different. Right. right. So we would go out and we would purchase Chromebooks for kids, and they would leave them in their lockers. They would leave them in their backpacks. They so now would, they're using them. Now they're using them because, because the teachers peer, are using them. every. But their their next door neighbor, their peers are using them. Right. So it's great. And the big plug I can put in is for a holiday coming up, birthdays, whatnot, if parents want to start saving their money and get them a device for home, everything they do is on the Google Classroom. Right. We also, we're training them to use Google Calendar, and the teachers are putting the assignments right on the Love child. Google Calendar. I use that. I think you made me use it or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, But now I love it. Right people. No, but it actually, but even 10 minutes right, before, my phone right. notifies me I'm supposed to be right. someplace. So instead of the old assignment books that would get lost and pages torn and, oh, I can't read that writing. It's right in their Google Classroom. It's right in their calendar. So when they go home, it pops right up. And so Tells parents could due. also have access to that. So you can say, hey, you have that ELA report due on the 17th of October. Right. So it's all interactive. So 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 they, they have it with them all day. All day long. And, and then, then they then drop at the, it off at the end so of the day? So at the How end of the work? day, we have – so we clipped a minute off of each – period to make it work to make a home room so at the end of the day they check it in they it goes back into their home base and they're good and knock on wood we've been doing pretty well and it truly it's it's been a really they're doing great with them yeah. so is that is that something that the eighth graders will then take with them to that's a great question kim Hmm. I don't know. Seems like a great question for the superintendent. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> we should ask him. Yeah. Oh, we'll find him. Let us know. Yeah, we'll that. see. <laughs> no, um, entertaining conversation. The, the reality is, is in ninth in going through the high school, we're trying to promote the BYOD right. policy because at that point, what we have are you know we have it's it's it's, in, it's in effect own device. device. Thank you. It is in effect uh, here at Westfield Technical Academy and Westfield High School. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's taken off as much as say, we had yeah. hoped, uh, but there's going to be a new push. And the other thing is, is we're going to start putting on our web pages like the kind of Chromebook and right. special deals and pricing, right. you know, and, and maybe that would be a, a holiday gift right. or something to Birthdays. that effect. Well, the big right. thing that I can't believe, like last year, our one of our other issues was phones in school. Right. And it, there's not no an issue, issue anymore because there's no need for phones. It's off and away. You can't tell me, oh, my teacher needed my. I had to take my phone out for my teacher. No, you have your Chromebook. So we've. But the, some of these phones, by the way, like the iPhone Plus or whatever. Oh yeah, they're, they're like biggest, size. Right. right. It's yeah. like the size of that. Right. And everything. It's interesting because all the Google stuff is on, is on my. I have right. on my phone. Right. And I think, but Mr. Zaporowski at Westfield Middle School, you don't need your phone. No, you You've don't. Got your Chromebook, so put your phone away. Yeah. it's off and away. <laughs> um, the thing too is, um, if they're used to in seventh and eighth grade right. using that Chromebook, yeah, it's right. really an integral part of their their day. They may be more apt to bring their own device once they get to high school. Right, right. right. Well, well, and I think and it's how we've been doing. Right, and I know other schools. Some we've had parents come in and say, you know, is there something we could we could buy this device and right. have it go on? So I mean, I think we're in the, the infancy stages. That's just it. I right. believe in February it's going to Westfield Intermediate School. That's our hope. Right, yes. right. So it's and it's also connectivity and it's all of those things. 
but it's it's been a phenomenal well and as the experience. students go, get older too when they start going to high school if you are going to college you are they don't really provide right. devices right. necessarily you're buying your own right and there are some people we know you know so i think uh, the technology committee has to meet again and mm-hmm. kind of look at that yep. but mm-hmm. you have some people who are just i have to have only apple products right. like i'm just an imac person oh, that good is for it. you the, well, yeah. <laughs> the price there the is pri- a little well, bit i know that but that's how some people are well, or they prefer an actual laptop as opposed right. to Chromebook, but mm-hmm. I think the Chromebook does pretty much what we need it to happen in exactly. our classrooms. And, and I've I think, been telling right. parents, I mean, the, it, it is scary if you tell somebody, you know, you need to buy your child a Chromebook. Well, I went on Amazon. I got one for 168 I saved up. My son saved up. And we got that for him. Right. 168 so, is a lot cheaper than you're going to get a laptop. Oh, God, yeah. 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 And, but it's all Apple he needs. Product. Yeah, well, yeah. The but Apple I don't products. I don't think you can get an iMac for oh, less no. than a thousand. Yeah, but this right. isn't for gaming. This is to get on Google to do your Google Classroom assignments, and that's it. Yeah. Oh. Um, all right. Uh, I guess uh, that's time for us to take a break. Yes. Huh, Carrie, we heard that. Sorry, I was told. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time I've told. Listen, nine forty-three. Uh, you're listening and watching Superintendent Spotlight. We'll be back in a few minutes. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. One of our underwriters here at WSKB's Community Radio is Carson Center for Health and Human Services a nonprofit organization located at 20 Broad Street in Westfield. They provided behavioral health and rehabilitation services and communities throughout Western Massachusetts since 1963. There are services for children, adolescents, adults, families, and couples. You can find them on the web at carsoncenter.org or at 413-572-4132. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. That's nice. 
in the backyard. Nice backyard. Nice. Yeah, isn't it great? Look at the cloud formations nice. today. Sorry, I'm totally off. I'm supposed to be doing sports. <laughs> but you caught our attention with the cloud. Oh, we could have had a play like the football field. In the we back. could. And actually, nice transition there, Thank Carrie. Thank you. Because I want to talk about the Westfield High School Bomber football team. Woohoo! Last weekend, they beat East Long Meadow 42 to 12. Oh, my. They are Did now the no, they are ranked up? number four in Western Mass. Woo! Two and one. And they were playing tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Uh, in are they at Agawam or at home? At Agawam. We're at Agawam. So that is uh, that is up and coming. Tomorrow's JV, up Friday. Monday, Friday. at home. Monday. Second. <laughs> um, but here's the other thing, too. When uh, the girls' volleyball team, they swept past Chicopee nice. Comp 3 to nothing uh, last night. Oh the Bombers Poor won Kim. 25 to 16, 25 to 15, 25 to 17 to improve to 8 and 2 overall and 6 and 0 in the Western League. Whoa. They can now secure a second consecutive Western League title with a win Friday night at West Springfield. The game begins at 6 30. Nice. I think Both we, we, uh, we, we play some volleyball around oh, here yes. huh? at yes. Westfield High School. They, they do pretty Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Girls soccer, Chandra Podolsky recorded a hat trick. Katie Bean tallied five points, two goals, three assists, Woo. and we're at Westfield Road to a convincing victory. The Westfield girls soccer team wow. is eight and one. Whoa, we uh, got some, some sports going absolutely. on here. Absolutely. Gigi Badger also scored for Westfield. Bombers Mackenzie Liptek and Emma Pedro each had an assist, and Westfield goalie Adriana Arona made six saves. So we're doing okay. And how about that um, golf team? Well, that's the next one, the golf team. <laughs> Westfield golf edged Long Meadow thanks to a tiebreaker on Wednesday with each squad's top four performances adding up to 162 at Long Meadow Country Club. It is the first time our golf team has beat Ooh. Long Meadow in a year. Ready? Ten years. Wow. So that's a pretty. Uh, that's a pretty nice. Feat. Long Meadows so, traditionally had a really good golf team. Yeah, yes. they they absolutely do. Uh, for Westfield Tech now, uh, Franklin Tech on the golf team. Uh, the golf team here got beat, uh, eighteen to six. Um, so now they're three and six. They need to go four and zero oh to qualify for the postseason. So good luck go to golf. go golfers <laughs> and girls soccer. They did lose to Duggan two to one over uh, um, the, not yesterday, but the day before. So that's our Google. sports update for local Google. sports. Duggan. 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 Oh. Academy. Duggan Academy. Um, okay. My Yankees are on tomorrow night. We're sorry. Um, <laughs> I think Tampa Bay beat Oakland, so that wild card they is did, done. Yeah. And then uh, Pete, I believe the Nationals surprisingly beat the Brewers too. Yes. So um, in now that you know, it's it's getting interesting. Be, it really is. Um, what I are the Red baseball Sox? Baseball was over. Well, so what are the Red Sox <laughs> are, are playing golf? Yes. They are, they're playing golf. Yes. Absolutely. They'll be playing Westfield Technical playing. Academy next week. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <Aww>. um, uh, <laughs> wait, good night. That's good. Today's Thursday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what season starts tonight? Bruins. Oh, oh hockey, hockey starts already? Yes. Hockey wow. starts already, yes. yeah. Uh, uh, Basketball is uh, not far behind. It's going to be Thanksgiving before you know yes. it. Yes. You know it? Although right? I'm having the same they're reaction they're you are. It's like they're playing in Texas this the year. Stars. Yes. Playing the, the Stars yeah. tonight. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. So hockey's back. Ooh, I'm from. <laughs> uh, so you have football, hockey. It's too much. It's too much TV. How can you watch all these games? I don't know. It's DVR. Like, yeah. DVR. Yeah. DVR. That's DVR. all you can do. So the Super Bowl um, is coming up. February. Oh, <laughs> let's not go uh, yeah. there yet. <laughs> That's a little um, too far yeah. away. <laughs> it is. It is. And but the Patriots are uh, on this weekend. Sit. Who are they playing, Pete? Uh, Redskins. I Redskins. Think. Yeah, and the Redskins look pretty terrible. So yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. come um, off of it. How did they? How did the Patriots look over the weekend? They looked horrible. They played against a really good <laughs> Buffalo no, team. Buffalo is a lot better than people give them credit oh, for, I know. and yep. I think their defense is good. I don't think the Patriots will have that kind of trouble with the uh, Redskins this weekend. No, and we um, will no. have a new kicker. You will, Steve. Yes. Steven Goskowski is out. He's hip season surgery. Injury surgery. Yep. Well, and I think something you knew something was off yeah. when you missed four extra yeah. points. Um, that's, That's a given. Yeah, it is. And I don't think he, was doing, <laughs> I think he missed some field goals, yeah. too. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, our sports wrap-up. Um, so, listen, we've been talking special education. Um, and we have Dr. Martha Von Meering with us. We also have uh, special education supervisor, Deb Ecker. We have special education supervisor, um, Kim Dion. And we have our special education supervisor slash assistant <laughs> principal, uh, Carrie Kells, today. And, you know, I, I think, you know, on, on a district level, I, I guess I want to reaffirm our commitment to our, our students uh, and meeting all of their academic needs and making sure, as you referenced earlier, that they have access to the curriculum. Would you all, you know, can Absolutely. we talk? Absolutely. I think we have a great staff, and I know sometimes it can be the, the whole special education process for parents can be 
it can bring up some anxiety, it's right? It, it can, can be. And we do our best to try to help folks. So, yep. um, I mean, anyone want to just comment on that and just... I think I, the biggest thing, sorry, Kim, oh, is just building the relationships with the parents. Absolutely. And knowing that we are a phone call away. I'm, I have the luxury of being in one building. Um, and I know Linda is in the same position Absolutely. as I am at Westfield Intermediate School. And we are there. Every day for our students and our parents. And Kim and Deb do a phenomenal job multitasking. Um, but it's building those relationships. Please call us. Um, we'll get back to you. And we want to have you in. We want you to be a part of the team. And help right. to rely on the um, educational team leaders mm. in your building. Those are the ETLs, the educational right. team leaders. They are, for what I used to call, like, Mini me's. They're mini <laughs> bed directors. Um, they run the team meetings. Uh, they make sure that you get the paperwork in time. They set up the meetings, and they really help you in navigating the process. They're passing out the information on the CPAC at every meeting. They're passing out information right. on the parent guardian support group. They're passing out the special services meet and greet flyers because they want to keep the families connected to the district and to the services that their children need. And, and I, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to say, you know, <laughs> shout out to the teachers too. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, yep. this is, um, it's a, it's a difficult job, but it's also very rewarding. They're I on know, the ground. you know, their teaching in general is difficult. Mm. It's rewarding. Uh, special ed teachers, um, you know, as a special former special ed teacher, you know, there were days, yes, um, that were very difficult. But all in all, it's a job that I I would never um, want to have given up. It's it's a very rewarding position. And shout out to the teachers Excellent. and the paraprofessionals. And our yes, absolutely. And and I think that you know the biggest takeaway is that. To c communicate with evaluation team leaders, with teachers, with staff, with parents, um, you know, it is our goal to kind of work together, all of us to communicate and work together as a team, so best serve all of our students, mm -hmm. right. um, so that everyone, special ed, general ed, um, receives the education that they have the potential for and that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and just also, a big piece of that is our CPAC. Um, you know, I've personally been able to get a little more involved with the CPAC members, and um, I just applaud them for all their efforts and all the good things that they do. And um, jumping on that, it. it's really interesting because um, Rachel Bullock wanted to make sure she knew that we were coming on uh, the radio um, and television today, and she wanted to make sure that I shouted out the CPAC and the department, the special education department, because she said our department is working with the CPAC to seriously work to improve communication, to have better access to special educators, and improve children's academic success, because that is why we are here. Right. And a good, way to a good way to do that is to have parent, guardian involvement and join the CPAC. Absolutely. And tonight is an excellent opportunity because, For that to again, happen. what right. is happening tonight? Because that was at the beginning of the show. I so. know. So remember tonight, just come to Westfield Technical Academy for 6 o'clock. Meet and greet. ...to the CPAC meeting, the Special Education Parent Advisory Committee meeting, where the Federation is coming to do a workshop on basic rights in special mm -hmm. education. You know what? One person, a uh, group of people we forgot, our service providers. Oh, I oh, know. oh. absolutely. Thank them. Who are they? You know, so our, our speech for our listeners, <laughs> right? Our speech language pathologists and assistants, school psychologists, school psychologists, physical, physical therapists, therapists, assistive technology. Yep. yep. Yes. So, yeah. Oh, yes. Occupational therapists, and we have some amazing um, assistive tech people that are on board that are running around the district like crazy people. Behaviorists, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we mm -hmm. Behaviorists, yeah. autism, autism assistants, right. and autism behaviorists. It takes a village. It really it does. does. <laughs> it does. And I think people need to know that as a district, we are committed to um, your, your child having the best academic outcomes that we can possibly get to. And I know sometimes things may not happen as fast as we want them to happen. And we may not necessarily always agree on the on the interventions that we talked about, the tiered in interventions mm -hmm. that need to take place. Uh, but in the end, I, I, I need people to understand that the best interest of your child is what we are working toward. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Absolutely. And the best place for them to be educated is in their home district, yes. right. in their home neighborhood where they can have, so they leave school, they come back after after they you know they get let out from their school program and they come back home and they're in their neighborhood so they go to the neighborhood school they're making friends continually yep. in the afternoon those are the same kids that they're going to the school with and they can build those relationships with their own peers right yep. 
Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else? I think there's an open house tonight, Paula. Oh, at Highland, Highland. Elementary School. Right. Yes. So that's happening at the same time, unfortunately. However, if you have a student at Highland School, you can go there. And see the interim um, principal, Jill right. Phelan. Jill Phelan and the and interim the assistant the principal, Chris Manfredi. But that's we have a position coming up there, uh, too, right? The interim VP um, search committee for Highland is also starting tonight, too. There you so go. Um, a lot's happening at Highland, but also throughout the district. Absolutely. And it's not only the work of the people here around the table, including you, Superintendent, but everyone. Everyone. Mm-hmm. Busy times. Yeah. I was going to say, I think the month of October is really busy for the schools. It is. And you know what? We have great teachers. We have great students. We have great staff everywhere. So really, at, at, in year four, it is still a pleasure to come to work <laughs> every day, uh, as long as it's not snowing. I was just going to say, uh, it's then 52 we're, degrees now, Superintendent. It's getting warmer. One, one more degree, and that's going to hit the high for the day. <laughs> I, I basically, yes. The low 50s for it's the high. It's going to get down yeah. to the 30s, I think, yeah. tomorrow oh. night. Oh. Let's have so some let's real frost. So let's do that frost. real quick. I, we need the frost. I'm not a fan of it, but I think I'm here on Friday night. Well, and so the mosquitoes Mm -hmm. are still out. And I know last week, yeah, we do. We need them all. But last week we got uh, put into the high level threat Mm -hmm. in terms of Triple E. And we did have to clip our games at six o'clock and or games and practices. And it's not, you know, that's what other districts have done that have had to do it. Um, You know, I'm the update hasn't come out just yet, but I think we're still in that high level threat. So we're continuing to do that. Um, if an, we're playing another district in an away game, uh, we are allowing that to happen if they're not in a high risk area. Um, but I, I do know, and, and you know, it's bug spray, wear long clothes, and really whether you're playing sports, yeah. it's not just athletics. Folks, you got to be prepared for it. Uh, I think we have 11 cases in Massachusetts now, scary. I think maybe even higher. Um, and it is a little scary, mm-hmm. right? So frost will kill the mosquitoes. Yes. So let's right. go frost. Go frost. Jack Frost, where are you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you can go away after right. the frost. <laughs> Take the mosquitoes with yeah. you. Go to go to Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for our show today. Thank you for listening again. Next week, it's going to be one of our best of shows. We're going to talk about STEM. Uh, and then the week after that, we're going to talk about our English language learners with Denise Rizal and Sue Moore. You've been listening and watching to, uh, Superintendent Spotlight. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh. Start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it, New York, New York. I want to wake up in a city that doesn't sleep and find I'm king of the hill, top of the heap. These little town blues are melting away I'll make a brand new start of it in old New York if I can make it there
It's up to you, New 